Hello, this is State Representative Dan Flynn. I represent House District 2. That's in Hunt, Van Zandt, and Hopkins County. We're honored today to have two great members of the Texas Legislature joining me. And uh, Cindy Burkett from House District 113. 113 correct. And it's uh, Sunnyvale. But uh, tell us a little bit about your district. My district runs up and down the east side of Dallas County. I have uh, seven partial cities and all of Sunnyvale, and all that's right. where I live, so that's kind of convenient. And but that is where the girls' basketball that's team right. won the state championship just did, two weekends ago. That's that. right. Very that's proud right. of that. And I watched them. Did you know that? No, I didn't. I was well, there. Yeah. I think you were there because you were there watching the other side. Is that's that right. No, no, no. I was there <laughs> before you because Martin's Mill girls won the state championship oh, in their right. class. That's right. Well, uh, yes, and we're very proud of them. Yeah, you are. I want, to, I want, and you serve on three very powerful committees in the Texas House, and we'll get to that later. But John Ray, what a pleasure to have you here from Waxahachie. Tell us a little bit about your district. Sure, uh, I represent House District 10, and uh, it's comprised primarily of Ellis County, and then I have a portion of Henderson County, which is uh, the neighbor to the east. Ellis County is the county immediately south of Dallas County. I think I actually border Cindy's district. Everybody knows where Waxahachie is, they just don't know how to spell it. Correct. Yeah. Or <laughs> sometimes they know how to pronounce it. Yeah. Either. But uh, I have four larger towns, you might say, in my district. I have Midlothian, Ennis, Red Oak, and Waxahachie. Uh, over in Henderson County, I have the city of Malakoff, as well as numerous other smaller communities, various... Great growth great area for Texas. Correct. It correct. really is. And you are on uh, two very strong committees. Uh, usually freshmen don't get picks like that, so right. you're doing well. And yeah. uh, Tell us about those. Sure, I'm very excited uh, about my committee assignments. I'm on Ways and Means. I'm also on uh, Homeland Security and Public Safety. And, uh, and probably one of the things that are getting some of the most uh, news media is the open carry and campus carry, and y'all going to be hearing that Tuesday, as I understand. We'll be hearing that. That's correct. We'll be hearing uh, open carry and campus carry on Tuesday. Well, that'll be an exciting day for you. Now, Cindy, you are on... I, so many committees, I can't remember. Plus, you're on uh, Sunset Commission. I am. I am. Sunset Commission, I've been doing the last year, and that's yeah. um, a challenging uh, job during the interim, but I've enjoyed it. We actually reviewed HHS mm -hmm. and all of the... And what uh, is that? Health and Human Services. Yeah. And all of the agencies underneath those. Uh -huh. um, and uh, this session, I've gotten uh, the privilege of being on the Appropriations Committee, and my subcommittee actually is Article 2, which also reviews the HHS. So you're controlling our budgets and you're on the local consent calendar. John, we need to take care of her. <laughs> right, yes. real nice to her. Yeah, yeah. Buy her lunch or something. Yeah. Well, yes. More importantly for my district, I'm on transportation. That's great. And um, being in Dallas County, that's very important to my entire district. Um, uh, I have Garland, Rowlett, Mesquite, Sidiaville, Stegaville. It goes all up and down the right side yeah. of the county. It, uh, transportation stays in the top five of most uh, uh, big priorities every session we come here Absolutely. and it will continue to be a priority because of, uh, of the growth of Texas. Yep. <clears throat> well tell me uh, John what uh, what issues are really important to you this session to maybe your district or one that uh, you ran on? Sure uh, I think probably the number one issue which you guys were just talking about is transportation. I do live in a high growth area uh, I live in a non-urban county, it's not Dallas or Tarrant, but we have a lot of transportation infrastructure that we're dependent upon for job growth. And of course, a lot of folks that live in my area work in the uh, DFW Metroplex and they want to be able to effectively commute into their jobs. So transportation is really a big issue. I have two major highways. I have uh, Interstate 45, I have Interstate 35E. Two of the most uh, well-traveled highways in the state of Texas, maybe in the United States. Correct. They both cross uh, House District 10, cross Ellis County. Then we have Highway 287, yeah. which also bisects the county, uh, which is a major thoroughfare. It intersects with uh, Highway 45, and then folks traveling from Houston to Fort Worth, for example, uh, use that corridor quite a bit. And then I also have Highway 67, yeah. so I have quite a few. You know, miles. all three of us are in a unique position. 86% of the people in Texas live east of Highway 35, right. Interstate 35, which right. uh, means that, that. Uh, there's a lot of folks here. Now, Cindy, you're, you're on the transportation, but I know, and, and I'm sure that's taken a lot of your time, but probably because you're uh, positioned on Sunset Commission, you uh, uh, have a lot to say about what's happening on, I believe, one of the most important issues facing the legislature this session is health and human services. It is. Um, that is. That takes such a big portion of our budget. Yeah. You know, when you look at education and health and human together, it's 75% of our budget. Mm. 
and it only leaves us about 17 percent of our budget with any flexibility. Yeah. So when we discuss those things on the floor in the next couple of weeks, um, that's something everybody needs to keep in mind. Well, it's such a big agency. It covers uh, seniors and it covers children at CPS and and uh, it's uh, you know medical issues. So uh, it really is an important issue. Now on uh, uh, local consent calendars, a lot of our, our uh, listeners may not understand what local consent calendars is. Well, as you're aware, local consent, we have, I don't know, what do we have, 6,000 bills that have been filed so That's far? That's what that, I'm told. That <laughs> number may have changed somewhat on Friday. Really excited about that, was, yeah. <laughs> But a lot of those bills are things that, that nobody cares about but your district. I remember yeah. my first session, I, I um, filed a bill for Mesquite to put a court of law into effect. Nobody else in this you know, house cares, as long as that's what my district wants, that should be something that goes through and shouldn't have to take up floor debate. So that's what local and consent was originally um, set up for, was the, mm -hmm. those type of bills. Now we do have bills that come through that get out of committee where there was no, there were no no votes. So, so you don't think my daylight savings bill will go through local consent? I think it should, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a joint author on it. Could be <laughs> John, tell me, uh, what, what is the issue that you're gonna be working on besides transportation? Uh, I really, I, I'm very interested in, in tax relief where there's a lot of discussion on tax relief this session. I got assigned to Ways and Means and uh, it's very, that's very interesting to me. I want to make sure we maintain a pro-business environment, pro-growth uh, environment for the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. It's always been, uh, I've always found it fascinating how tax policy implicates or in, uh, impacts rather the overall economy. and. Uh, we're already digging into those issues in, in the committee, in the Ways and Means Committee, and I'm excited to tackle that this session. Now, now Chairman Dennis Bonin has said that uh, he wants to cut about $4 billion out of the budget. Is that correct? That's what, that's what uh, the Chairman has said, yes. But he also said we're going to uh, take care of that Homeland Security problem down on border security. Right. We're going to take care of retirement pensions, mm -hmm. right. and so the challenge is going to be there. But I think what we want to do is put some... Uh, put some uh, firewalls in place right. so that uh, we don't have runaway uh, spending, which is, I think, what most of the people that we talk to right. are most concerned about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh, Cindy, you're, uh, you're on the, uh, tell me the other committee. Appropriations, Transportation, Local and Consent, and then, of course, Sunset Commission. Okay. What other, what other uh, issue on Sunset is going to be uh, uh, pushing us? Well, I think the big one's going to be HHS. Yeah. Um, we, we looked at TWC as well and TEA briefly. Now, TWC but, is one that gets a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they want more money. Uh, <laughs> of course, I think they all do. I, that's a, one of the challenges that we have. When, when the media goes out and says that we have all this money, then everybody thinks it goes right. to them. Uh, sometimes sessions are easier when there's no money because you just say yeah. no. And, mm -hmm. uh, well, and I don't have. think, you know, looking at transportation, yeah. I've been working on 635 East and expanding that. Well, that project by itself costs $2.3 billion. Yeah. Well, if, if we happen to get $5 billion a year, um, and I'm not sure that we're going to reach that goal, but if we happen to be able to appropriate that, it's not all going to Dallas. Yeah. You know, it's a big state, so there's a lot of miles of road Well, roads probably to the three of us don't want it to all go to Dallas because we all have <laughs> special needs. Uh, right. I know I, I probably have more of a rural area than you all do, mm -hmm. but... Uh, Hunt County is, is uh, connected to Dallas, and so a lot of the needs that we see in, in Dallas roll over to us. Yeah. And uh, right. so I think, I think the, the whole deal is now Homeland Security, uh, border security is a, a big issue. I'm still in the guard, so yes. it's something that I've been real involved with. And uh, uh, do you see anything different going on in that uh, committee? Well, Homeland Security, obviously, is, we're very focused on the border issue. There's a couple of bills that we've already fast-tracked through the committee, one being the human trafficking bill. We'll uh, vote on that today. I believe so, mm -hmm. yes, on the, yep, floor. on the floor. So we, we fast-tracked that because uh, due to our, our border with Mexico and these major transportation corridors we have, 35E, well, 35 through the majority of Texas, but Highway 35, Highway 45, and I-10, uh, there's a lot of human trafficking issues, so we have House Bill 10 coming through, and then we've got House Bill 11, which really addresses, in sort of an omnibus way, uh, several recommendations that were uh, developed through the select committee that met right. over the interim. And, and because of my involvement on the border, I really recognize the criminal element that's there. Right. And so I've been very supportive of increased uh, Department of Public Safety folks down there because I think right. they meet the needs that we uh, really need to address with that criminal element of the Mexican drug cartel very and the human trafficking. I very agree. true. Yeah. Yes. So I think I think that's kind of the direction we're going to go and I've, I've noticed that the uh, 
governor has indicated that's what he, he wants to do, too. I'm real pleased to see that that's happening. Correct. So uh, Correct. as the session goes by, uh, do you have a, uh, an issue that you're looking forward to as a, as a freshman? Uh, you know, the voting will start happening next uh, this week. Right. And it'll be interesting when uh, sometimes it starts going pretty fast. And uh, you got to remember that uh, uh, you better have your mind made up before you get there often. That, right? That's true. That's true. You know, you're, you're talking about big issues. I, one of the issues that I'm looking forward, which is a local issue, we're, we're talking about local issues earlier, but I'm seeking to, I filed a bill seeking to name a segment of Highway 287 after Chris Kyle mm -hmm. and his friend Chad Littlefield, uh, who, was all, who also lost his life with Chris. And uh, I'm excited about that. Um, Midlothian is, is very proud of these two men, and uh, it, what, we want to honor yeah. them through the highway, and we want folks to know that they're from Midlothian as well. You so know, I'm we, looking uh, forward to that, moving that bill. Last session, we passed the uh, Chris Kyle uh, Veterans Job Bill. Right. And uh, we were real proud of that, had an opportunity. Fact is, uh, it wasn't intended to be that way until Chris got uh, uh, murdered. Right. And right. Uh, so, uh, it turned into being a Chris Kyle bill because it allows veterans to have an opportunity to uh, uh, have a, a head up on their jobs because, you know, if you can drive a 18-wheeler uh, in a combat zone, you ought to be able to negotiate <laughs> Interstate 35. However, however a lot of us <laughs> wonder really? about that sometimes. Right, yes. But uh, <laughs> anyway, and, and going back to transportation, Interstate 35, it touches all of our lives and and because we all have to drive on it to get mm -hmm. to Austin right and uh, it uh, it is a mess and it's one of the uh, big challenges that we're gonna have to face yeah, it's yes. bear this weekend, it, I tell yeah you. <laughs> yeah it, it is it's interesting well Cindy you're uh, uh, tell me one more uh, big issue that you've got on, on the Sunset Commission coming up well I tell you we'll be reviewing TxDOT yep. this next year mm -hmm. so um, with my my interest in transportation that's an important issue I'd also like to see the North Texas Toll Authority come under review as well. Mm -hmm. They've been in effect for 17 years and have never been reviewed at all. So um, I think transportation is a big deal. Why don't you kind of explain to us a little bit about the Sunset Commission? <coughs> We've got just a few minutes left. The Sunset Commission reviews every agency that we have in the state every 12 years or less. And they simply look at a couple of things. Sunset, people immediately think of that word that you're going to close the agency down. And there have been cases when we have smaller agencies, but really we're looking at their processes, if they're doing what they were put into effect for, if they're accomplishing their, mess their mission, if they're doing it efficiently, if we're getting the, the biggest um, yeah. outcome of our investment of dollars into an agency of tax dollars to make sure that they're doing the best job they can with the with the best um, and results. doing the job they were intended to exactly. do. Exactly, that's one thing that agencies sometimes they drift along, kind of uh, the little empire building. Exactly. Uh, I've always said when I served on the Sunset Commission, I wish we had this on a federal level. I, I have think had that that would that. be great. Right. I've got a list of uh, I agree. Uh, Sunset issues that need to be taken care of on the federal <laughs> level. <laughs> That's I think right. That would be something we want to do. That's right. Well, I want to tell you, it is such a pleasure to have you all here today. Uh, I, I'm excited about uh, working with you, John. It's always fun to have new freshmen coming in that are having excitement and, and are, are ready to go to work. Right. Thank you. Cindy, you've, Thank you, you have a great record for the last three sessions and I'm always enjoy working with you and I've been friends a long time and it's it's just great to have you here. And I appreciate working with you, Dan. Yes. I think you stand firm on your on your Yes. Uh, well, beliefs. you're kind. I thank, appreciate that. Thank you, that. Dan. Thank you for having me. But it's uh, it is. It's an honor and a privilege for us to get to serve in the Texas House and uh, we look forward to the next time we get to visit with you. Mm -hmm. Thank you and God bless. <laughs>